Hi, my name is Joshua Cryer, co-owner of Do Work LLC and Upcycle Me LLC. I'm an electrical engineer by trade. Spent the last 20 years uh, working in the utility sector as a senior engineer. I am now a developer, business owner, entrepreneur. Hot damn! I'm originally from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and I'm excited to be here. I'm gonna walk you guys through the specifics of developing this project. It's called our carriage house and ultimately getting to uh, our forever home, but I really want to take the time to walk you guys through some key things that I've learned and um, maybe give you a heads up on some things to watch out for. So here's the thing, I can show you better than I can tell you. Let's go. This is the house that I grew up in. It's uh, 919 Hugh Street, located right here in the East Central neighborhood. Uh, my mom bought this house when I was in high school um, and have nothing but memories here. When I graduated from Northrop, uh, we figured that we'd be here forever. And by God's grace, uh, I think that's gonna happen. So we're gonna walk, take a look at the carriage house and kind of go through uh, some of the things that um, we've learned throughout the process of building, but I want you to keep in mind for a future video, this thing is gonna be coming down. And if it's the Lord's will, I'm gonna be in the excavator tearing it down. Just a quick plug. Um, so over time, we've picked up the tools that we need to do this type of work. Um, I had mentioned before that I am an electrical engineer by trade and my wife and I, we decided to start do work back in 2016, I believe. And in that time, we weren't doing a whole lot in terms of being out here functioning as an entrepreneur. We were doing our nine to five. But in that space, we were picking up, you know, one tool at a time, the Jeep that you see here with the, with the, uh, with the logo. We bought our military grade trailer, which we use for dumping mulch and stone and um, doing demolition. This enclosed trailer is specifically for my electrician equipment. So all the doodads that you need to pull wire, whether it's 12-2, um, Romex, uh, the box, the switches, um, all the fittings that you need to do the work. And so uh, I guess my point here is as you're developing your business, it is totally okay to pick up the tools as you can afford them. And uh, as long as you got buy-in from your wife, you get that stuff stored and ensure that you got it ready to go, take care of it, do your PMs, and um, make it happen. A couple things I wanna point out. You see the flags here. Um, obviously, when you're doing a, a project, you wanna ensure that you are uh, calling your, in Pennsylvania, it's called PA1 call. Out here in Indiana, it's the, you dial 811 before you dig. It's the safest way to do it, and so, uh, we had the local gas company come out and run a brand new service from across the street, by the way. So they ran under the road uh, with the tool. Um, the, the main header, the main gas line, the main header for the gas line is on the east side of the street. And so they ran up under the street to install this new service, which you'll see when we walk alongside the building. We got new gas service going in. You also see uh, brand new city water. That's what this blue line is here. I'll actually be renting an excavator and you guys should most definitely come along. I'll be learning to drive it on the fly. I'll be excavating down to um, below the frost line per code and getting this water line out there to the street as well for our new service. Before we look at uh, the broader scope of the project, I just wanted to point out um, the need for installing temporary electrical power, it is the safest way to go. What you don't want is to have extension cords running all throughout the job site. And so we actually trenched from our existing home. Uh, code calls you to go 24 inches below grade when you're uh, burying direct burial cable or UF cable. So we did that. We hand dug with a pickaxe and a shovel, 24 inches down, we landed our cable, installed this GFCI. 
And so it's just a safer installation. And from here, we've got some temporary lights and some additional out outlets inside the building. It's gonna help us throughout the course of the project. This will stay. When the project is all said and done and we get ready to knock this guy down, we'll be pulling the, the wire out, rolling it up, throwing it in the trailer, getting it ready for another project. But keep in mind, when you're doing work, you wanna try to do it as safely as possible. Here's the gas line that I mentioned before. It was amazing working with the local gas company, Nipsco. They came out and they got us uh, a new service at a competitive uh, rate. Uh, we're excited to have, um, to be built out for electric gas um, and in the future, solar power, as well as um, we'll be buying a generator to power the entire site. So we basically got the utilities rubbed in. Uh, on the exterior. So there are many key aspects that I could cover on this video. I'm going to try my best just to point out the things that um, that I think are important when you're designing your workshop. And that's really what this carriage house is about twofold, right? So the top half of it is our Airbnb. It's going to function as um, an asset, something that's going to produce a cash flow. It'll help support, you know, sending our kids to school and, you know, paying for diapers and all that great stuff it takes to live and you know have a life right the bottom half this is what this project is all about for me i wanted to have a workshop and so that starts with the drive apron originally when we did when we designed this driveway i felt like it was going to be too big and so the first tip that i will point out is the importance of working with the designer we work with somebody who um, who was familiar with the uh, the overall size of the drive and being able to balance the size of the building and you know the trailers that we have that we talked about earlier and just all the things that I want to use the garage for, it was all sized appropriately on paper. And so shout out to uh, John Police over at Concept One. We really appreciate the work that you did in laying out the design for this project, which we'll look at here in a second. So you're looking at a 25 foot deep drive apron um, this allows for our airbnb -er to park right here in front of the door. It'll be a straight shot for them to get into the building. And there's enough space here to the west of the door for me to get my Jeep in and out, to pull my trailer in and do modifications and all those great things that we contractors like to do when we're inside the shop. I wanted to hit on lead time. So we talked about the drive apron, something else that's important when you're developing your own project. If you're an expert developer, this is going to be, um, you know, me preaching to the choir. You already know this, but if you're doing it for the first time, like we're doing, then it's important to realize that lead time can have a direct impact on your project. Anything as simple as windows. I wish I would have known to order my windows ahead of time. Right now, we're in a, in a period where supply and, de and demand, that economic matrix is so far out of whack that when you go to buy your windows, you need 10 weeks, 10 weeks to get them in. Same thing with the garage door. I had to custom build this garage door, which is functional. It opens all the way up. It's lockable. Um, it took me like a day and a half to put it together. Something that I didn't anticipate doing. But when we went to order the garage door and some places they were 22 weeks out. Another thing, and as an electrical engineer, you would think that I would know, but I didn't, to be honest. The electrical panel, I wanted to put 400 amp service on this building because uh, the Airbnb and the workshop require 200 amps, and then the 2,700 square foot home we're gonna build in the future also requires 200 amps. The idea was to have one panel, one meter with a disconnect right there on the side of this building, disconnect obviously on the inside, and guess what? The electrical panel was 45 weeks out. By God's grace, we were able to find a 200 amp panel. So on the fly, we had to shift gears and decide to put a meter on this building. And in the future, we're gonna provision for a 200 amp meter base and meter on our new home, 2,700 square foot uh, building. So uh, going back to the lead time, the windows. Not only do, if, if I would have known I wish I knew. What I know now, I would have ordered the windows the moment we signed the contract with the general contractor because they would have been here and we would have installed them and completed this waterproof box that we were going for in phase one. Again, you got to be able to adjust on the fly. So what we did was we built 
temporary windows using um, Visqueen. Uh, if you want to scan up real quick so the guys can, guys and gals can see it, um, we framed out some temporary windows. We got a um, uh, a bar there to, you know, safeguard against falling out of the second story. Um, and the whole point of the plastic doesn't have to be perfect, but the idea with the plastic is to keep the perspiration, the moisture, the snow that's coming, the rainwater, to keep it off of the floor, to keep it off of the OSB to prevent swelling. So again, to avoid all that in the future, make sure you identify your critical path items, anything that's gonna uh, directly impact your ability to execute the project on time. And oftentimes these things are, um, they're easy to identify if you ask the builder that you're working with to order the material, the person that's, um, that's maybe doing the front end of your design, someone who's pouring your concrete or framing the building up, they'll be able to give you that insight. So be sure to ask, ask, ask as many questions up front about products that could impact your lead time. Like a janitor, I got so many keys on this project, but um, what we're going to do now is go inside the building and I'm going to point out some key elements uh, of the design, the utility room, the, um, the width of the steps, our ideas around uh, ensuring that we had a 36 inch opening on the doorway. Uh, it all just makes sense. So let's go inside. All right, here we go. Right, I spent 20 years as an electrical engineer. You don't know everything. 